Arul Kanda Kandasamy, once the face of 1MDB, has been arrested by anti-graph officers over the alleged tempering of the fund's final audit report. The former 1MDB CEO will be spending the night at the MACC lockup as he was not allowed bail. Arul will be jointly charged tomorrow morning with Dato Sri Najib Raza for abuse of power at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court. The XPM then chaired 1MDB's advisory board. He was arrested yesterday, but unlike Aru, he was released on an MACC bail. Last month, AG Tan Sri Dr. Madina Mohammad revealed that 1MDB's 2016 audit report was scrubbed several times. The key amendments include the removal of paragraphs mentioning Lotek Joe's attendance at a board meeting, as well as the existence of two versions of 1MDB's financial statements for the year ending 2014. The changes were allegedly made under the instruction of the then PM Najib, his former aide Tansri Shukri Saleh and Aru. Lembaga Tabung Haji will transfer 19.9 billion ringgit worth of underperforming properties and equities, including a plot of land in Tunraza Exchange it bought from 1MDB, to a special purpose vehicle under the MOF. Group MD and CEO Dato Sri Zukri Samad says the SPV will acquire these assets, comprising properties with yields of less than 2% per annum, and equities with impairment of over 20% at book value. No cash transactions or government guarantees will be involved in the exercise which should be done by December 31st. Instead, the SPV will issue a 7-year 10 billion ringgit sukuk, which will be fully subscribed by the Pilgrims Fund, and Islamic Redeemable Convertible Preference shares totaling 9.9 billion ringgit with no maturity or dividend. Upon completion of the exercise, Tabong Haji should have 77 billion ringgit in assets to match 77 billion ringgit in liabilities for the financial year ending December 31st, 2018. This would enable it to continue paying dividends to depositors, albeit at a lower quantum than before. The underperforming assets taken up by the SPV are expected to be turned around in seven years. Malaysia has seen a major reduction in corporate deal activity this year, with total deals in mergers and acquisitions, private equity venture capital and initial public offerings having fallen by nearly half to 12.5 billion USD. This is compared with the record levels last year, which witnessed corporate deals worth 20.3 billion USD. Global advisory Duff & Phelps says this could be due to political changes and business taking a wait-and-see approach on strategic growth initiatives. However, it notes that momentum has picked up towards the end of the year, with a few notable transactions in Malaysia's healthcare sector, such as Mitsui & Co's 2 billion USD acquisition of a 16% stake in IHH Healthcare. Duff & Phelps said this in a statement today in conjunction with the release of key findings from its Transaction Trail Annual Report 2018. U.S. private investment firm Castle Lake is reportedly buying about 30 narrow-body planes from the AirAsia Group for about 800 million USD. Citing people familiar with the transaction, Reuters reports that Castle Lake clinched the deal after edging out U.S. lessers, funds and leasing units of major Chinese banks in a tightly contested deal. The Newswire says it is buying older aircraft, which are under lease to AirAsia's affiliated airlines. According to its sources, the two parties are expected to close the deal in the next few weeks. The deal is said to be one of Castle Lake's biggest in the Asian region with one airline. AirAsia is currently in the midst of monetizing its assets as it seeks to strengthen its low-cost carrier brand and transform itself into a fully digital airline. Saniji Technology aims to secure an order book of 500 million ringgit over the next five years with its latest venture into the food and beverage business. The company has entered into an equity joint venture with Singapore-based FKS Holdings to supply fresh produce for the international F&B industry, as well as offer Japanese fine dining cuisine. Sanichi will hold a 70% equity interest and FKS the rest. Group MD Dato Sri Dr. Pang Chao Huat says the JV plans to set up 25 outlets over the next three years in major cities across the region, including Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Hong Kong, Shanghai and Melbourne, offering omakase fine dining Japanese cuisine. He says partnering with FKS, which is headed by Liao Wei Xiong, a former executive chef from Marina Bay Sands Restaurant, will allow Sanichi to ride on the popularity of omakase cuisine.